Good evening, good morning, good night, whatever the case may be, it's time for world history, of course. And I am the teacher, the world history teacher, the history teacher with the most, I know the most. My name is Coach Hughes. Welcome in to another fun-filled, exciting video lecture about, well, history. That's what we're here for. And we are continuing on our discussion, our topic on the religion of Islam. And anytime that we talk about religion, whether it would be about Islam or Christianity, Judaism, Hinduism, or Buddhism, I always like to say that I'm not trying to convert any of you out there to any one religion, but we are merely looking at this through a historical lens to see how it shaped cultures and, well, history itself. So, last time we touched upon the beginnings of Islam founded by Muhammad. Uh, there he was born in Mecca and kind of his uh, really meditation, thinking about how the rich did not help the poor and how that gravitated and developed into the religion uh, that we're discussing today, Islam. So we're going to continue our discussion of this religion. So after Muhammad died, his followers, well, they wrote down all the messages he received from Allah. This is kind of goes back to, if you want to compare it to Christianity, uh, after the death of Christ, how Peter and Paul and the apostles, they continued on the lessons and teachings of Christ. Very same similar situation here. The collection of teachings became known as the Quran. The central teaching of Islam is Allah is the only God and Muhammad is his prophet. Now, the big three religions, and when I'm talking about the big three, I'm talking about Judaism, Christianity, Islam, all three have this in common where they believe in just one God. Now, Muslim, Muslims excuse me, believe that the Quran is the exact word of God as it was told through the prophet Muhammad. Now, like Jewish and Christian Bibles, the Quran does say that there is only one God, and Muslims refer to this God as Allah. Now, Islam also teaches that there is a definite beginning and a definite end to the world. And on the final day, Muslims believe God will judge all people. And this is really a theme in a lot of the different religions that we've talked about. Uh, Christians, I believe, call it Judgment Day. So there is that kind of final judgment on people of the Muslim faith as well. Those who have obeyed God's orders will be granted life in paradise, and those who have not obeyed God will be punished. It's kind of that good versus evil mentality, which is really present not only in the other two big religions, but if you go beyond to Greek mythology, Roman mythology, Hinduism, Buddhism, there is this overall uh, lying uh, good versus evil theme in most religions uh, throughout world history. Now, Muslims also believe that God wishes them uh, to follow many rules in order to be judged as, well, a good person. These rules affect the everyday life of Muslims, and in the early days of Islam, these rules led to great changes in the Arabian society there on the Arabian Peninsula. For example, Owning slaves was forbidden. You could not do that. Now, circle I, remember that in your head. This is probably going to be a quiz question and test question. Jihad is an important Islamic concept. Literally, jihad means to make an effort to struggle or fight against the enemies of Islam. It refers to the internal struggle of a Muslim trying to follow the uh, Islamic beliefs, that internal conflict that a lot of people have uh, when they are trying to be a sin-free individual to try to do good in their life. Uh, it can also mean the struggle to defend the Muslim community or convert people to Islam. 
The word has also been translated as holy war. Now, <clears throat> this does not mean that every Islam uh, individual, uh, not mean that every Muslim is uh, just trying to inflict war on non-believers. Uh, there are definitely extremists in any religion uh, that uh, you look at, whether that be Islam, Christianity, Judaism, Hinduism, Buddhism. Uh, there's definitely certain people that take it to the extreme, while others kind of are laid back and kind of try to follow that internal struggle, as we kind of referenced just a little bit earlier. Now, another important holy book in Islam is the Sunnah a collection of Muhammad's words and actions. The Sunnah spells out kind of the main duties for what people that follow Islam, Muslims, uh, should and should not do. Uh, circle B, put a star by it. Remember that in your head. This is extremely, and I do mean extremely important. These are known as the five, count them, five pillars of Islam. Now, the first pillar is just a statement of faith, that uh, you are a follower of Islam, that you believe in the Quran. The second pillar says that a Muslim must pray five times daily. And if my memory serves me correct, these uh, daily prayers are also uh, facing in the direction of the city of Mecca there uh, in the Middle East. The third pillar is a yearly donation to charity. Remember, Muhammad was a big proponent of the rich helping the poor because he did not believe that that was taking place. The fourth pillar is fasting during the holy month of Ramadan. If you don't know what fasting is, fasting is basically a period of time where you go without uh, food or water. Uh, I, memory serves me correct again, during the month of Ramadan, uh, that fasting takes place from sun up till sundown um, during that holy month. The fifth pillar is a Hajj, a pilgrimage to Mecca uh, at some point in your lifetime. The Hajj, like I said, like it says here, I was doing it for memory, but it does say it. The Hajj must be made at least once uh, in a Muslim's lifetime to the city of Mecca there. Uh, and you can kind of see in the picture that kind of is below uh, my uh, video here, uh, the different uh, pillars of the Islamic faith uh, and the order that they have them in there. Uh, and what each of those pillars, as we just went over, kind of includes. The Sunnah also preaches moral duties that must be met in daily life, in business, and, well, in government as well. For example, it is considered immoral to own some, uh, or owe someone money or to disobey uh, a leader there. Uh, immoral. The Quran and the Sunnah form the basis of Islamic law or Sharia law. Now, Sharia lists rewards or punishments for obeying and disobeying laws. Sharia punishments can be very, very uh, severe, to say the least. Sharia also makes no distinction between religious and secular life for believers and non-believers there. Most Islamic countries today blend Islamic law with a legal system much like that we have here in the United States today. And I know that was short but sweet, but that kind of concludes our second uh, discussion on uh, Islam and really the five pillars of faith. That is the big topic that we went over today. All right. Until next time, be blessed and stay safe.